Welcome everyone this morning. Uh, gracious, happy Pentecost to all of you. It's just a delight to see some of you for the first time. I know the feeling must be mutual. I'm your new pastor. I'm John Steyerwalt. And uh, I don't expect you to remember the last name as easily. Please call me Pastor John. Some of my youth in the past have called me PJ. I've gone into too many doctor's offices and heard the nurse call out my name Styrofoam or Star Wars. Pastor John is so much easier, less syllables. It's great and a delight to be with you. Um, just a note, uh, parents, if, if you have young children, and if they haven't already picked one up, in the basket on the table are some pinwheels. And we'd love our, our children to take a pinwheel and bring that pinwheel wheel with them um, for, for today. So just a kind of a short announcement there. And also, if you're a guest with us, we're delighted in your presence. We hope that this is a, not a hot morning for you, but a warm morning of worship and praise. We do invite guests to fill out our guest register on the table with your contact information. We'd love to be uh, in touch with you. And just a couple of other sharings this morning. Uh, if you haven't already picked up a communion kit, then please grab a communion kit on the uh, welcome table during the Eucharist. And by the way, we offer Holy Communion to all the baptized who worship with us. You do not need to be a Lutheran or a member of, of faith to join in the Eucharist. During the Eucharist, I'll give instructions as we hold our wine kits and post kits up. So please take one of those. Um, also, just another note that uh, as we gather, we're socially uh, distancing and we're giving thanks for the fact that as we worship outside, uh, we're able to sing. And that's just something that I have heard commonly from so many of you as a choral member and a vocalist. I've looked forward to the chance to sing again. Also, just another reminder, we are thankful for, uh, for April and Matt, who are going to host an outdoor soiree, a party for parents, so that we can talk about our youth and our children and dream of new ministries for our, for our youth and our children. Uh, this week, early this week, and I believe, Tim, that's a 10 o'clock meeting with uh, council, uh, or is that Monday? Monday, 6.30. Monday, 6.30, council and worship leaders, uh, committee leaders will gather again to continue prayerfully, uh, having conversation about safe gathering inside. We're going to talk over how things went today. Uh, just keep your council and your worship leaders in prayer. One of the things I've shared with our leaders as we talk about gathering for worship is that we, we listen to the mandate from Christ to love our neighbor and that all of our planning is based on ways that we can, as a congregation, be uh, careful and caring in this uh, pandemic time. Also, you might notice my phone number is in the bulletin. My phone is always with me. It's always on. Uh, please let me know of any kind of pastoral need and pray for me. As I continue to, um, to go through the directory and try to make phone calls to you and greet you and introduce myself, typically in a non-pandemic world, I am in homes and at work introducing myself to folks in a new congregation. So uh, I look forward to giving you calls to begin with and uh, look forward to getting to know you so much better. And then finally, next Sunday, we celebrate Holy Trinity, but we also honor our four graduates, three high school graduates and a college graduate. Uh, David is here, Troy is here, um, Chris and Kylie, we're looking forward to, Kylie, we're looking forward to, um, to honoring our graduates and that'll be next Sunday, not only during worship, but I believe there'll be a chance to gather a little after worship as well. And finally, I wanna thank all of our volunteers, Walter Guild in particular, uh, Tim and others who are volunteering in so many ways to put this service and all of our services together and especially my delight and thanksgiving to work as a partner with such a great musician as, as Adam. So uh, let's begin our worship this morning as we give thanks for the gift of our baptisms. Our actual beginning of service begins with the rite for the regathering in worship. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who upholds us through adversity, who consoles us in our sorrows, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Join me as we sing, Holy Spirit, enter in. Hear this reading from Isaiah. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Let us pray this prayer of lament. We lament before you, O God, comforter in our distress, the losses that our congregation has suffered, we have missed our weekly assembled worship, our sharing of bread and cup, our communal song, our greetings of peace, the full observances of Holy Week, the three days, Easter, Pentecost, and Trinity, baptisms, confirmations, weddings, and funerals, gatherings for education, coffee hours, the mutual consolation of the faithful enacted each Sunday. And we mourn members, friends, and family who have died of COVID-19. Oh God, we lament our losses, for they are many. Restore us, gracious God. Restore us, gracious God. We lament before you, O oh God, sustainer of the universe, the tragedies that our world has experienced. We lament the millions sickened, the countless dead, thousands unemployed, medical systems depleted, economic security threatened, government assisted inadequate, political discord escalated, despondency rampant, racial injustice intensified, communal engagements canceled. O oh God, we lament the world's tragedies, for they are incalculable. Help us, compassionate God. Help us, compassionate God.
read the psalm responsively by whole verse. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the mighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes by noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Yet today, O God of the everlasting arms, we rejoice at this regathering of our congregation. We praise you for Sunday worship in word and sacrament, for the personal presence of pastors and ministers, for infants, children, youth, adults, and the aged together, for communal song and live music for coffee hours, for Bible study, for service with one another for the wider community, for the mutual consolation of the faithful and active on Sundays and weekdays. O oh God, we rejoice at this regathering for baptismal life together. Empower our church, faithful God. Empower our church, faithful God. And we pray, O oh God, for safe harbor, for the emergence of wholesome world, of a wholesome world, and health restored, mourners consoled, vaccines available, hospitals restocked, employment reinstated, poverty averted, sustenance shared, science respected, travel resumed, fear replaced with confidence, sorrow turned to joy. O oh God, we pray for the emergence of a wholesome world. Renew the whole world, merciful God. Renew the whole world, merciful God. Give us your peace, eternal God. Give us your peace, eternal God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. The joy and peace of God be with you all. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones. Your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth. Give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I am going to ask that our children just perk your ears up, and boys and girls, you can stay where you are. That's all right. And if you have a pinwheel, go ahead and grab your pinwheel. I noticed how nice and windy and nice and breezy it is today. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things today. I see that Eris has her pinwheel out. So today, today is, let me make sure I know where our kids are. There we go. Today's Pentecost. Let's say that word together. Pentecost. It's a long word. How about an easier word? Let's say wind. Wind. Look, I brought some toys with me because I knew it would be a little breezy today. So I brought this really cool twirler. I don't know what you call this. I'll call it a, a wind twirler. Isn't it pretty? You can make all kinds of shapes with it. You like that? I'm going to show you something else that I have. 
and I'm going to pull, what do you think I have here? Bubbles. bubbles, that's right. In fact, Mr. Tim has some bubbles on his technology up there. Let's, you want to make a bubble? Let's see if Pastor John can make one first, okay? Ready? It makes a lot of bubbles, doesn't it? There they go. I'm going to let you hold on to Is that okay, Mom? Or Grant? Oh, there we go. Okay. You hold on to that. That's a bubble maker. Come over here. So, we made bubbles with the wind, and we had a streamer with the wind, and you have your pinwheels, and the wind blows your pinwheels. That's so great. Today, I'm going to tell a story about a windy day. All Jesus' friends were in a room, and the wind just blew into the room. And the wind tickled their ears and made them feel so excited that they went out and they started saying, we want to tell you about Jesus. So today I'm going to tell you a story. You got your pinwheel, right? Today, when you hear me talking about that special day, moms and dads and grandparents too, when you hear me say special words, okay, when you hear me say, um, dream, yeah. or when you hear me say, here's a longer word, Pentecost, I want you to wave and blow your pinwheels. Can you help me do that when I tell the story? And one final thing now, let's make sure we have names down right, okay? So you call me, I'm Pastor John. Can you say that? Pastor John, you got that? And I'm looking forward to us doing all kinds of great things together. Okay. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go ahead and have a seat. The service continues with the reading of the lessons. A reading, a reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each of us hear in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, 
and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. The service continues with the, uh, the second lesson. Okay, the uh, reading in the bulletin is a repetition of the uh, first, as I see it. You're so right. Thank you. And uh, I tried to pull up uh, Romans on my phone, but I can't see. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father and the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. And I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I will have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Last week, well, actually two weeks ago, I... I was so delighted when Zane and Eris rushed in to my office. And after being here about a month, I had learned to tell the sound of Zane and Eris pattering and running and chatter in the lobby. And so I knew that they were heading into the office when I heard them outside. They rushed in. They were on a mission because they knew that in my office on the lower part of my bookcase near some dusty commentaries and theological books were two wonderful puppet friends named Barnabas Bunny and Mildred. And they knew that Barnabas and Bunny and Mildred occupied that lower shelf. They had met them before and they were eager to meet them again. And so when they rushed into the room, uh, Zane grabbed Barnabas Bunny, a soft, gray, furry rabbit puppet, and hugged him tightly. And then Eris also took Barnabas and embraced him and hugged him. And then she did something really amazing, something that um, was a lesson in theology for me, Easter and Pentecost theology, because Eris took uh, Barnabas and she 
put her hand in and manipulated his mouth and Barnabas, before you knew it, became animated and alive and he turned to her and he said, I love you, you're my friend. Then Eris turned the beautiful little soft bunny Barnabas to me and waved at me and said, say hello to Pastor John. And then amazingly, Barnabas came to life, his mouth moved and he said, Hello, Pastor John. I really like you, too. It was amazing to watch Zane and Eris as they did something very Eastery. They caused the dormant figure to come back to life. And then on top of that, in the same fell swoop in my office, they did something very Pentecosty. They gave a dormant figure an enlivened spirit. They breathed life into a figure that was so quiet otherwise. That is just to me one of the best moments that I had in the last month. And I think that what those two children did was just amazing and in a way radical and revolutionary, very Pentecosty. It's just appropriate that we gather in person this day for the first time in a long time on Pentecost Sunday, that, that revolutionary, radical, power-filled, astonishing, astounding day in which the church comes alive again. And it's wonderful that we are gathered here to do this. I look back at my calendar and realize that the last time I led in-person worship with a congregation was last March 22nd, has been a while. This day is a profoundly powerful day, an appropriate day for us to come together to worship again in person for the first time. Because Pentecost is a radical, revolutionary, astounding, stunning day in which so many strange things happen. A day that was so powerful that those who witnessed the disciples speaking in different language were certain that the 800-year-old prophecies had come to pass in their eyesight. But face it, when we come together on Pentecost Sunday, when you have ever come together on Pentecost Sunday in your congregation, you didn't come to church that day expecting anything radical or revolutionary or astounding or stunning. You expected appropriately a beautiful service, a gentle service, and maybe the most radical thing that would happen that day on any previous Pentecost in any one of our congregations was that we would wear tents of red. Otherwise, we never really expected anything amazing or astounding or stunning or apocalyptic on this Pentecost day, but we expected the tame. All Christians really expect the same thing. We did not expect a stunning, jarring image to happen to us at worship. But this is just what happens those many years ago on that first Pentecost day. A jarring, stunning set of images and sounds and, and events happen that completely jar and amaze and stun people who are there. Picture that moment when those disciples are gathered in a room. They are gathered there in fear, fright, terror, for what they may experience because they follow Jesus. They've barred the door shut. They've stopped it and scotched it shut. They are not expecting anyone to come and to interrupt them. They are frightened, these very common and average disciples. And then, according to the second chapter of Acts, some weird stuff happens. The room is filled with an inrushing wind. Lights appear. Witnesses declare that lights not only appear, but flame dances through this room. And the witnesses on that first day of Pentecost are shocked. The words are stunned. They are amazed. They are astounded. As these disciples begin speaking languages that are not their own. Now these disciples, these people are known in the community. They're not known to be rock stars, intellects. They're known to be pretty average people. 
These are not, these disciples, the kind of people that you would stock a uh, Chamber of Commerce board with. They are average and ordinary, and yet now they speak in different languages. And the people are amazed by what they hear on that Pentecost. And Peter is so vexed by what happened, so astounded by the events that have lifted him up, that he is carried away to the point that Peter will preach the very first Christian sermon. What does he say? Peter starts to describe a world in which the, the axis of the world seems to be tilted on its edge. He talks in terms of the power of the, the prophet's words coming to light. He talks in terms of God's astounding feats. He, he, he swears that young girls will begin to see visions and prophesy, and that young men who are otherwise taken with ordinary things in life will see visions, and that even the elderly, the people on the edge of society in that day, would dream dreams, that people would be brought up and captivated and carried into a new kind of life. This is an amazing first experience. It's a jarring first experience. Peter talks in terms of a moon being red like blood and the sun experiencing an unusual eclipse-like event in which the sun turns dark and then black. When we come together for this, this worship service, we don't expect to find a darkened sun or to experience jarring things. And up to this Pentecost, I think, we have not expected Pentecost or any other day in our life to be filled with apocalyptic visions, to be filled with such weird and jarring visions that we believe that this is such an unusual experience in our life. That thousand-year-old prophetic foretellings are coming to life. We've always experienced Pentecost as just another normal Sunday in which we get to wear red again. And that everything is normal. But not anymore. We have been living through an apocalypse. And we've begun to experience images that maybe even equal and vie for the same kind of images that Peter preached about, a darkened moon, a red moon, a darkened sun, children prophesying, the elderly dreaming visions. In this pandemic, which is not over, we have witnessed things that veer close to apocalyptic in their nature. We know what it's like to see streets filled with people half covered in face masks. We have learned to take that for common. We know the vision of wards in hospitals filled with frantic doctors and nurses rushing up to dying patients, coding them and working feverishly so that they can survive. We have grown accustomed to those images. We've grown accustomed now just recently to the apocalyptic images of bonfires in India as the pandemic is at such a terrible rate that people are burning bodies so quickly that crematoriums are beginning to melt. We have seen images of smartphones filled with the faces of weeping family members saying goodbye to their loved ones. We have seen equally heartbreaking images of the elderly begging behind nursing home window panes, hoping that they can get closer to their family members. We've grown accustomed to empty sanctuaries during funerals, and we have grown accustomed to gravesides opened up dark caskets overhead with only two or three people allowed to be there. We have lived. We are living through an apocalyptic age with images that are just as stark and stunning as those images that Peter preached about, prophesying girls, vision wrapping boys, the elderly dreaming dreams, a church being planted in the midst of all of that weirdness. 
So I think it's fitting that we come together to worship in person again on this Pentecost Sunday. And I think it's fitting that as we recognize that we are experiencing apocalyptic images, that perhaps the idea of wind rushing into a room, of flames dancing in the midst of a group of disciples, it's not so unusual that maybe we can recognize that God has the current capacity to make us just as new a church as the church was in those first days. Maybe this Pentecost, for the first time, maybe for the best time, we can recognize that the power and the story of God's power to stun people and disciples and shake them up and captivate them and send them into the world to make a new church is not something so foreign for us right now. That God has the capacity now to cause us to be, as we gather again together, tentatively, still carefully, to be just as new a church as the Pentecost church was over 2,000 years ago. For the images that we've seen really rival the apocalyptic images that we find in Scripture. And that we can recognize that God's call for us to be a new church, a radical new church, is not so foreign anymore. Maybe today we can embrace Pentecost in a way that's unique and new and more authentic than we have in the past. And we can see that there are wonderful ways for the church to live anew. And yet those many ways are very normal, average appearing, but just as radical. So let us be a new church, a new church in which girls and boys prophesy, a new church in which the elderly are embraced and honored and prized as they see new dreams and new visions. Last week, I was with our dinnerless discussion group as the discussion group talked about the horrors that are happening right now because of the pandemic in India. We talked about ways to reach out. Emails were exchanged and that group was in a way living out the Pentecost mandate, dreaming new ways that we can be God's people here on earth as a youth. I gathered with a youth group and members of several Lutheran churches who had purchased a small home on the edge of our small town. And in that home, we would house a Vietnamese family that was rushing away and escaping the death in Cambodia. We scrubbed walls, we prepared the house, we put utensils in the drawers in the kitchen. We helped that family come to life. We breathed a new animating life into a family's future. Parents of Faith Lutheran now are planning for a parent soiree for parents and and teachers to come together at the backyard of a member's home so that we can again dream and plan new things for our children and for our youth here. As you see, we are here a Pentecost church. We are just as wrapped up in the Pentecost dream. We can be God's children here on earth Because we have seen apocalyptic visions, it's not a surprising thing that we can experience and expect God's animating spirit to breathe new life into us so that we can dream new dreams and see new visions and be God's children here this day. Isn't it wonderful that God has the capacity to take a young girl and a little boy and have them rush into a pastor's office reanimate a furry bunny puppet and teach the pastor something new about Pentecost theology. That is the act of God alive in children. The same God is alive in us this day as we gather again a new church impacted by the Pentecost spirit, stunned by God's capacity to live in us and equipped in our baptisms to be a new church as we move into our future. Let us pray. We thank you, O dear God, for animating the church and breathing your spirit in it. We thank you, O God, that we are coming through this terrifying experience. Help us to see the apocalyptic images that we've experienced as signs that we can also be open 
open to your capacity to breathe in your church, in faith, new life, new vision, new hopes, new dreams. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our service continues with the hymn for the day. gather confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover in you the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore 
especially, dear God, those that we offer up now in our silent prayer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died and you raised their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we praise our, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please turn and you may bow to your neighbor. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places come to you, O magnificent Creator, stunner of the world, planter of the church. And so we praise your name and join their unending hymn. this time we invite those of you who are at home worshiping with us we greet you and we also remind you always to come and be with us streaming online our Facebook handle is faith Lutheran clay and at home if you have not already done so please find bread and wine I invite everyone to hold your kits up during the prayer it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life please raise your kiss on the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you please continue to raise your kits during the prayer and again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin we are bold then to pray saying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
take your bread and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please take and drink. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ, Lord Jesus. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing the last hymn together. the benediction and sending our president Tim wishes to speak to you hey everybody sorry for the, the wind that does nothing um, just wanted to let everybody know we're you know the pastor mentioned it the, the council is meeting we're regularly emailing back and forth trust me there's information coming from everywhere uh, and we're trying to come to decisions uh, based on that information and we just really want your prayers and patience as we all figure this out um, it's changing every minute it seems so just keep us in your prayers one of the things we as we approach these decisions what we're trying to make sure is to take into account those people that cannot get vaccinated there's going to be people with us worshiping that cannot simply cannot get vaccinated and even if it's just one person we need to make sure we we address them make them feel comfortable make them feel welcome uh, and this is not I, I just realize I'm saying them this is not an us and them this is all us so we just have to remember our brothers and sisters um, so please keep that in mind one of the pieces of information we don't have is who all has vaccinations and who does not. And we're not asking you to do to tell us that. Although I wouldn't mind if you volunteered and came and told me. I would love to know because we that helps us know how many. And when we're playing a percentages game, uh, and there's nothing about this that is a game, uh, but when we're looking at it, on percentages lead having all of that data in front of us is so very helpful so again if you would if you don't mind letting us know feel free if you don't want to say anything don't uh, that's all I can say keep us in your prayers please council meets tomorrow night to talk about how we're going to transition to indoor when the day comes uh, and worship and music meets Tuesday night to talk about 
Tuesday night to talk about how um, how to better do worship services. If there's anything we can improve upon, um, whatever. We're, lots of people are doing lots of hard work, and we appreciate all of that. And we appreciate you. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you very much. And again, my phone number is in the bulletin. I look forward to meeting you and getting to know you so much more. Debbie, my wife, is excited about coming to worship with us next Sunday. Keep her in prayer as she continues. She is a middle school public school teacher finishing her school year out in Columbia, South Carolina. She will move here at the end of June, but she's looking forward to being a guest next Sunday. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah.